Professor Brian Brown's research shows that vulnerability fosters good emotional and mental health. It is a sign of courage. We become more resilient and brave when we embrace who we truly are and what we are feeling. The Vulnerable Scientist Podcast is a space for scientists to tell their honest and authentic stories. I am your host, Saranya Kerry, who happens to be a scientist, informal science communicator, and I help scientists create personal websites. If you want to support this show, go to www.patreon.com slash the vulnerable scientist. You can also follow this podcast on all social media platforms at TV Scientist Pod. Boyfriend. Boyfriend. <laughs> then that's the best segue to go to boyfriend. <laughs> so, uh, and, and in this in this section of boyfriends, and mm. again, maybe my mom will listen to the podcast. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna put my boyfriend topic into a, an umbrella of friends. Okay. And I think friends friends are very important. Mm. I again I'll just emphasize that the top if i was to do like uh, to to do a list of top top 10 friends mm. i would say 80 percent would be friends from undergrad mm -hmm. we still do businesses together now wow. there are some business business ventures that we are trying and exploring in Nairobi, mm. and these are the people we are doing businesses with mm. i trust them we, like we form the trust and 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 friendship when mm. we were in campus we were mm. doing discussion groups to to solve calculus that time. Now we are doing discussions to solve a uh, profitability issue, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if there is something, and it wasn't, for me, it wasn't intentional, by the way. It happened by mistake. We formed a discussion group and we realized that we were learning efficiently, way faster mm -hmm. when we were discussing mm -hmm. compared to when you read alone. alone. Mm -hmm. And so it was real necessity and it was just mostly for us to pass. Mm. But we formed a very strong bond with mm. these friends. Mm. That's where I got my boyfriend, mm. actually. <laughs> so, mm. uh, but now when I look back, oh my God, I really appreciate because I don't know where I would have gotten that kind of quality set of friends mm. if I had not, if it wasn't for that discussion group and the mm. fact that we interacted a lot and formed and formed a very strong bond. Mm. So anyway, for people who are in campus, ooh, be intentional about the friends you choose to hang around. Mm. They will influence your life like mm. it or don't like it, mm. where you end up, they will support you, you know, when you are high, when you are on, on, on low. So be intentional about forming mm. uh, or forging strong friendships of people headed in similar directions. Mm. Now, talking about boyfriend, mm. uh, um, my, my boyfriend in campus, mm. I have to, I keep shout out, keep shout outing to him because mm. even the scholarship would not have been possible if it wasn't for him. Mm. So, he wow. was he himself he wanted to go out of Kenya for mm. for postgrad mm. me me remember i was i just wanted to get a first class impress mm. my parents mm. get a job somewhere mm. and get married and live happily ever after but for him mm. it was different and and i think he had gotten a scholarship to go out of Kenya for undergrad but the letter i think the letter of admission arrived later when mm. he was already settled in Jaquat and he decided, let, let me do undergrad in Jaquat mm. and then maybe I'll go out later. So mm. him, he was set out, out of Kenya for postgrad. Mm. And like I mentioned, your friends, where they are heading to, their dreams, their, their, their character, mm. their ambitions, mm. they, it will rub on you, like it or don't like it. Mm. And and I, while I'm telling you this confidently, I would not have gotten road scholarship if it wasn't for my boyfriend at that time in campus. Uh, so he, when he was looking for scholarships, mm. he, he found road scholarship, or rather maybe he knew about it. He wanted to apply, but mm. he was one year older. So road mm. scholarship also has an age limit. You okay. have to be 20, 23 years when you are applying. Mm. Uh, you have to be younger than 24 years when you go to Oxford. Okay. So by the time I was, I think I was one of the maybe two or three in class who were young and mostly just because of our birth, birthday months. Mm. Otherwise, we were almost eight. Same, same, same years yeah mm -hmm. so uh, so my, my my boyfriend comes in class and he tells me there is this scholarship that i found mm -hmm. road scholarship and mm -hmm. gladys i know mm -hmm. you are the only person in this class who can mm -hmm. take uh, so road scholarship wants excellent academics because mm -hmm. you have to be admitted to oxford mm -hmm. and then number two they want extracurricular so if you can show leadership if you can show extracurricular mm -hmm. you are good Mm. So it's actually three things. I would say they break it down to education, 
mm-hmm. excellence academics and then leadership and then mm-hmm. extracurricular mm-hmm. and extracurricular could be sports it could be comedy if you're doing stand up comedy it could be mm-hmm. university politics it could be even volunteering and mm-hmm. anything else you do outside class mm-hmm. anyway mm-hmm. so when you told me that uh, obviously he knew my story mm-hmm. but my reaction Sarah when he told me that I was like hey even if it's like flattering me like mm-hmm. this is this you are taking too much. This to another level mm-hmm. this is too much you are, you are you, this is too much mm. so anyway i did i didn't believe him because i think there is also and i think that's that's why i keep on emphasizing the the need of surrounding yourself with quality friends mm. people who can see you like people who can say sarah mm. you are very good at moderating why can't you start a podcast mm. you are very good at uh, your podcast why can't you pitch to host something in tv or whatever mm. friends who can see what you For can't sure. see Mm. And and I have to say that my my boyfriend knew my abilities, mm. and I personally doubted myself. Um, so anyway, I kind of disregarded his his advice mm. or, um, of me applying for scholarship. Mm. And then I think he he did um, he did a structure of my mm. story, like oh, grew up here and here, blah blah blah. And then he he gave me a a rough sketch of. A rough, a rough sketch of of, uh, of like an essay that uh, I was because you have to write an essay, mm, right? Mm. And I read the skeleton. He wrote that a, he had drafted a skeleton for you. He wrote a skeleton of uh, so so kind of so because I told him I don't think I can qualify. Yeah. And then he's and then he he's very good at writing. Mm. So he is writing essays. So he he writes a, he writes a skeleton like oh glad after you've said right no. Here. After I said no, mm. and then he writes, uh, Gladys scores uh, 298 marks. Mm. After high school, scores uh, after after four years, mm. scores uh, eight points. Mm. After after that, like, kind of summarizing my academic story, mm. but in a persuasive manner. Mm. Gladys is the first 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 person in our family. I was the first person in my family to be admitted to uni. By the way, all mm. my brothers they went to colleges first. Oh. So so he wrote that summary but in a very persuasive manner. Mm. I read that story Sarah and I tell you when you read your story written by someone else you feel like ah uh-uh, this doesn't sound like me. It was way way more impressive you impressed. and I actually bought the idea. I was yeah. impressed by my story so, yeah. written by someone else. And and that's when I decided you know what after all I have nothing to lose. And there was no payment. There was no fee to be paid. Mm. I think Kuna, sometimes that, that these people will, will tell you, pay 10K or 20K mm. and you'll get a scholarship. Uh, there are so many scholarships who are like, which are free. You just apply and mm. and you, you, you see if you can get it. So this was free. So mm. I put in application. Mm. I forgot about it. I, I was actually exploring other scholarships that I thought I had an, an easier chance of you getting. You genuinely this was, thought this was, this was not way this wow. was way out of my league, according to me. Mm. And then now you'll be surprised when I received a letter on 27th of October. So I don't forget these days and <laughs> because they are, they, are really, they are really defining moments in, in history of my academic career. Mm. 27th of November, I received an, a letter from Rhodes Scholarship National Secretary. And I, I was reading, I was reading the first, uh, the first, um, uh, like I was, I was looking back when uh, preparing for this uh, podcast, and I, I was just like reminiscing and going back down the memory. Mm. And like this is the first sentence of the of the letter: mm. "Dear Gladys, in connection with your application for the award of the Rhodes Scholarship, mm. I'm pleased to inform you that you are mm. one of the candidates shortlisted for the interview by the selection committee." Mm. And and Did for you the finish first even time, the... I was like, "This thing is real." Did this you finish the letter? Did you finish oh, the letter? So, no, the, the the letter is long. No, did you finish at that point, like when you first, when you first read? Oh where... no, it took time. Mm. I I just saw that I'd been shortlisted, and the first person that I wanted like us to read together was was my boyfriend, obviously, because it seemed who really pushed me. Mm. And 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 we read the letter. The letter is uh, like a very long, long one page, A4. Mm. detailing the next steps mm. what what to expect next and then what mm. to expect after the if you are selected etc etc mm. but anyway so needless to say that that was a letter that changed my life because mm. now after that now I was now preparing for the interview i had to like buy buy nice clothes because you know i was in juja boys and it was mostly jeans and aprons 
Mm. So I had to like uh, get like nice presentable Just blow clothes up for runs. interview and yeah, <laughs> and, and the rest is history. So mm. uh, I would say um, I just wanted to say it's. I mean, in campus, I, I don't know if it's a good advice, but personally, mm. I would say if you meet a quality, um, if you meet a quality person, it, mm. it doesn't hurt to form. It doesn't hurt to explore a relationship in a yeah. in a healthy way, like someone. Someone who you support each other, academic, uh, academics and, and otherwise. Mm. Um, but I have to say, sadly, though, we didn't end up together because of some reasons later. Yeah. But when I look back, we really it's... helped each other. So mm. we did graduate first class mm. uh, with, with him. Mm. And he also got a scholarship and, and he, went to, he went to another country. I went wow. to the UK. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So, and, and that's the end of the boyfriend story. Unless there is another question. <laughs> I love that. I love that uh, you said this story. Uh, it doesn't have to end the way things end, but it's something mm. significant. So this is like having a friend who believed in you and she told you about the opportunity and even went further and, and showed your story to yourself, told, told the story mm-hmm. to yourself, told, told the story of you to yourself. And mm-hmm. she was like, you can do this. And mm-hmm. it's, it's amazing. Um, is there anything else that like, you'd like to share in terms of your university life? Not really. I think if, if I was to summarize my university life, I would mm-hmm. say academics, I would say leadership and extracurricular, mm-hmm. and then friends and boyfriends. Most of the memories that I have are around those three topics. Do you want to learn about the strategies for enrolling, thriving, and excelling in a PhD program? Dr. Gladys Ngetich has written a book on the PhD journey with lessons from various PhD students across the globe and from her lessons as an ex-Oxford PhD student. Dr. Gladys is now a postdoc researcher at MIT. For you to get a chance to get a free book, post your favorite podcast episode of the Vulnerable Scientist podcast on any social media account and tag the Vulnerable Scientist social media account with the hashtag the Vulnerable Scientist book giveaway. You can now pre-order the book on Amazon or as an ebook on Kindle Cobol Dahlia ETC. You can get more information on this book on www.gladischepkirui.com/books.